so I got something really cool to review. And there's something that sets this apart from other scooters. So pretty. We'll take a look at all the design, details, and features of this Unagi Model 1. Let's do this. Welcome to an amazing day on this channel, reviewing an e-scooter. Emma, if there's one thing to know about me, I love to... Scoot. Yes, I love to scoot, and it's just one of those little things in life that puts a giant smile on my face. But first, if you're new here, if you can click that, and if also you can reach that, oh yeah, that feels good. I'll try to be as thorough as possible on this review, but also trying to keep to the points. However, if you need to skip ahead, there are time chapters down at the bottom. Also, the link for this scooter and everything else is in the description, so make sure you check that out. Plus, a surprise link. I own a few scooters, and I've tested a bunch out as well, but there has been nothing quite like this one. So pretty! The Unagi Model 1. I've never seen something so stylish. It comes in a very nicely packed box, and setting it up is as easy as that game you play when you're a toddler and it fits in just right. Now, before we go for a ride, let me give you a rundown on the design. Three, two, one. It uses the same carbon fiber as the SpaceX rockets, which is lightweight, but heavy duty. The deck is flawless. There are no seams, joints, stitches, or sandpaper grips. Singular piece of machined aluminum with embedded silicon on the top surface for traction. So it's rigid, but still comfortable to stand on. Even the kickstand is part of the deck design and not some third party kickstand. The scooter has been glossed over with the perfect finish with three separate coats and it will never rust. And you can decide between four different colors. Now up to the handlebar. This is what really grabbed my attention first, a magnesium alloy handlebar, and it's a really comfortable grip to hold. Pressure sensitive brake, throttle, horn, menu button, and no visible wires. On the other side you have a flush mounted LED headlight. The wheels are made of solid rubber and puncture proof. You see the little air pockets spread throughout the wheel? That design actually acts as the front and rear suspension. The braking system is very responsive. One gentle push and the dual electronic anti-lock brakes will activate. And the harder you press, the harder it brakes. They also have a friction brake in the back in case you need some extra stopping power. This model has dual motors to give you extra power and pep. The motors are custom built utilizing rare earth neodymium magnets. And another really cool feature is the one click easy folding mechanism on this. Unagi patented a stainless steel hinge. And this is the easiest scooter I have ever unfolded. Now let's take this thing out and I'll tell you a few more details about it. So like. So the first thing I notice, whether you have the dual motors on or not, this thing is quiet. Seriously, my Enigim is so loud and obnoxious, it's a bit embarrassing sometimes. The motor size comes in at 12.7 centimeters, dual motors, one on each wheel, which you can change mid-ride which is important because if you start going up a hill, you don't have to stop, you can just turn it on while you're riding and it gives you that extra boost. With the dual motors on, you can go up a 15 degree hill with no problem. The max torque is 32 Newton meters and 1000 watts instant max power. And when you have dual motors on, it speeds up really quickly. The tires are 19.05 centimeters. And as I said earlier, the shock mounts are basically built into the tires. However, this doesn't make it completely smooth on rough surfaces. You will feel the bumps and some of the grooves in the road. With the electronic brake, it's pressure responsive. And on a dry road, it'll stop in four meters or 13 feet. It has an ingress protection rating of a five and a four, which means it's dust protected and it's splash proof from all directions. They won't suggest on their website going out in the rain, mainly because they don't want to be liable on you slipping on the road, but you can go in the rain. They just wouldn't recommend it. The max weight load on this thing is 125 kilograms or 275 pounds. And one thing that I noticed is it's really easy to turn. I'm not sure the mechanics behind why, but compared to my others, it just seems so much easier. And the battery is a Sony lithium ion, 9,000 milliamp per hour, 9.0 amperage, which provides the highest energy density and lowest charging time of any battery in size. And to get a full charge from 0%, is about four to five hours. The maximum range on this is 25 kilometers or 15.5 miles. And these are under optimum riding conditions. 
Actual range will vary from rider weight to terrain and riding style. The top speed is 25 kilometers per hour or 15.5 miles per hour, although you can unlock it to ludicrous mode, which is where you can max out at 30 kilometers per hour. Ludicrous going in on the verse because I've never been defeated and I won't stop now. So who is this for? I like to think that this is the perfect city cruiser, especially if you want to stand out from everyone else that has the same old boring scooter. But also it's great for those joy rides around the neighborhood or meeting up with friends. So the biggest selling points in my opinion for this is the sleek design. It looks good, it feels good, it sounds good. It has dual motors to get up those steep hills. It feels safe, it's easy to turn, and the airless tires are very beneficial. It's rust proof, it's lightweight, easy to fold, easy to transport. They've got great customer support, 30 day money back guarantee, and free shipping to Australia. By the way, I live in Australia, if that was confusing. So the biggest flaw to me is the battery life. Now this one is a little bit picky because sometimes you have to sacrifice battery life for design. Case in point. And to be honest, the fact that they could squeeze in this much battery life and pep on the motors and keep it lightweight on this thing is beyond me. That's a, actually a really good job on their part. Now this also might be a flaw, but the cost. It's not the cheapest scooter out there, but there's a reason for that. You have materials, you have things that are gonna last you a lot longer than some of those other cheaper scooters. But just like choosing cars, not every car is going to be the right one for you. And you just gotta figure out what you want in a scooter. And if you're looking for something that's more than just the average looking scooter that everyone else has, the Unagi Model 1 would be an excellent choice. Now listen, if I've missed anything, I will do some more follow-up videos and maybe test it out against some other scooters. But the main part is, look at how pretty. Oh, so pretty. There we go, this seriously was such a fun video to make. And stick around on this channel, I do a lot of fun product reviews. Hopefully more e-scooter reviews coming up. Uh, maybe they'll be on that list. I'm looking at you, scooter companies. Come on, come on, come on. If you're looking for a new podcast, make sure you check out my Tech is Hard podcast. It's a weekly podcast where we talk about tech gear and being YouTubers. Also check out my music channel. I sing a song or two, that's always fun. And uh, check out this video right here. This is a great one to watch next. All right, hope to see you next time.